Look at that green dot right there. Oh, shoot. I was smiling at myself. <laughs> I understand that. I would do that with you a lot. <laughs> hey, this is John Orberg, and I'm here with one of my favorite human beings on the planet, Laura Kathleen Turner. One of. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be like the Muppet Show. On a very, very, very there. short list of two grumpy old guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. My brother Bart loves those guys. Mm. Hey, this is a very special edition of Become New Dot Me. We're walking together through... Uh, wisdom about how to live Dallas Willard's book renovation of the heart but I'm with my daughter Laura today and asked if she would be willing to talk a little bit and she said she would good morning I'm really glad to get to be here so yes and you may be watching this in the afternoon or the evening but we're taping it in the morning yes fair so now you know um, and uh, we'll be looking tomorrow at the parts of the person I'm eager to get to that it's like very central to Dallas's thought but for today with Laura we decided that we would talk about peace. And that's a really, really deep topic and one that goes real deep with us and with Laura. So I'm gonna read a few words from Renovation of the Heart. This is a bit farther on in the book if you're following along page 134, but they're remarkable words about peace. And then Laura, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. And uh, for anybody who was ever with Dallas, knew him, one of the striking things about him was there was a very deep sense of unhurried, unruffled peace about his, his body, his face. Peace is the rest of will that results from assurance about how things will turn out. It is always a form of active engagement with the good, plus assurance that things will turn out well. The dead are often spoken of as at peace, but they are not at peace unless they're actually alive and doing well. He just say stuff that makes me chuckle mm -hmm. sometimes. I am at peace about it, we say. And this means I'm no longer striving, inwardly or outwardly, to save some outcome dear to me or to avoid one that I reject. I have released whatever is at issue and am no longer even putting body English or spin on it or inwardly gritting my teeth. Of course, everyone is at peace about some things, one hopes, but few have peace in general and fewer still have peace that reaches their body and its automatic responses to such a depth that it does not live in a covert state of alarm. Most people carry heavy burdens of care, usually about the things that are most important in life, what will happen to their loved ones, their finances, health, death, their physical appearances or what others think of them, the future of society, their standing before God and their eternal destiny. That's quite a list. To be at peace with God and others family, neighbors, co-workers, is a great attainment and depends on graces far beyond ourselves as well as on our own efforts. That is also true with being at peace with oneself. And Laura, I know that peace is a uh, loaded and many layered word and a long journey for you. So I'd love to have you share whatever you'd like. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's such a funny word in some ways because I think there are the layers that we hear if we grow up in the church or if you're around long enough mm. you hear about um, you know I'm part of a liturgical church and so every Sunday we we pass the peace mm. to one another um, <clears throat> and a lot of people hate that and I do, I do too sometimes because <laughs> it feels a little awkward and uh -huh. do you say hello just to the people that you know or do you greet the people that you don't know and are new and in COVID it's even weirder um, there's you know peace on a large scale world peace there is uh, peace between people mm -hmm. um, you know I try to be at peace with all people insofar as it is kind of mm -hmm. in my capacity and power to do so um, as we read and then there's peace within myself um, peace
peace with God, peace about future circumstances. Mm. And does that mean then that I don't worry? And does it mean then that if I uh, do worry, worrying is a sin against God because I am not at peace? Um, and what does it mean when the chemicals in your brain tell you that you should worry? And why are we wired to worry mm. in certain ways and to not be at peace or to accept certain things um, in a good way? When I'm driving and I see someone run across the street in front of me, I, I ought to be worried that I'm not going to slow down for that person yeah. in a way that will enable me to do so. So there are layers to this that go um, so deep. And I think the more that we attribute this to effort alone, um, the more isolating it is when mm. I have felt in the past like I cannot create peace in my life. And I felt like I have let God down. Uh, when I have not been at peace. And I think the place in the last few years um, that Dallas talks about, and then there's a bit that I'll share in a second that um, Stanley Hauerwas talked about years ago in an interview that I love. But when Dallas talks about peace comes from the acceptance of God's gift for us in his son. Um, there is a beauty to acceptance that I think can lead to peace mm. because at its deepest, when we start to accept what is true, we start to realize that uh, we cannot control it. Mm. And so I think of, um, you know, a situation with a friend um, who recently lost someone that he really loved. And this friend of mine is in pain and hurting and I've been the person in pain and hurting and um, you can't reverse death and it's very hard to immediately be at peace um, with death. But if I can start to work to accept this is what happened, I cannot change it. I can live with it and in it. And it's okay to feel all the emotions I'm feeling. Then a strange sort of peace starts to come into my body. Mm. And so it's accepting those circumstances. And then it's also accepting the emotions that we have. I think, um, it's easy when you've grown up in the faith to feel like there are good emotions and there are bad emotions yeah. and um, only certain of them lead to peace. And so therefore the other ones, I know I felt when I felt anxious, I should reject and the push more, them away or resist them, push them away, resist them, mm -hmm. get rid of them, yeah. not talk about them. Um, but one of the things I love that Stanley Hauerwas mentioned in this interview years ago, he was talking about, peace in terms of pacifism mm. and he said that he is a pacifist precisely because he is a violent person and he knows his capacity mm. for violence i don't think that means stanley Hauerwas is going to go and punch people <laughs> but you know i mean you never know no I've you never, don't i've never been in his classes yeah but um he talked about there's a vulnerability that you have to have before you can be at peace and i think that through line is what connects world peace and peace on a global scale what connects interpersonal peace and what connects to deep personal peace. If somebody's watching this and uh, it's even hard for them to hear the word peace because they feel like they're anxious, worried, and then feel guilty, I must not have enough faith, I must not trust God. Uh, before we sign off, what would you say to the person that struggles with peace? I'm thinking now of um a little while ago I was talking with my therapist and she and I were talking about something I was doing and I was saying I just don't know if this is right if this is God's will for me what should I do and she kind of laughed at me which is actually helpful and she said maybe it's not maybe you just don't know and that's okay and you have to trust that um, that God is gonna be able to make things right and so that's not to say it's so easy but to say um, I find that when I'm not at peace, and I think this is true for a lot of people, there's an inner obsession over what we should yeah. do, yeah. how peace should look, how it does look when I look at someone else on the outside. And I would say um, it's almost never true. Almost everyone has some deep pain that they're not mm -hmm. sharing that you may not see. Um, and that um, maybe God is not as concerned that we get it right as he is with us receiving his love. Hmm. So... The word for today is peace. And as you go through your day, um, when fear and worry come, 
Don't push them away. Don't uh, try to resist them by willpower. Acknowledge them. Welcome. Rick Blackman talks about welcoming one of his clients named Anxiety Wilma. Welcome, Wilma. Uh, and invite peace. Laura, thank you very much for doing this. Would you do this again? I would do this again. Thank you. Thanks, friends. Be at peace.